Hey guys, we're gonna uh, talk about a teachable moment here. We talk about this in safety uh, in one of our courses here, and that's on using a, using a grinder here. And one thing about safety with the grinder is people get so focused to not cut their fingers off or to cut themselves or, or to slip and hurt a part or do something else. But one thing that is also really important about the safety of this is that we think about protecting our work environment, okay? And so uh, what we have here is we have a part that was ground in this vise here. So the student was working in this area. And unfortunately, with these, with these grinders, what's often not thought about is where is that debris going to go? Yeah, it's going to go on the wall and everywhere else. It bounces off what's behind and comes back around. And so the reason we're going to make this video is not to, not to pick on anybody, but to make sure that the teachable moment that every mechanic should know is to protect their work environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, the reality of it was is that rags were put around the, what they thought were the important components. But my thought is, isn't it all important? Yeah. Yes. And if you look through the bench here, I don't know if you could kind of get close if we're going to be able to see some of, there's metal shavings from the aluminum, I mean, just everywhere. Does it look like you think you can see it? A Pretty sparkly there, huh? Yep. Once you come over here and take a look inside this box and see, you know, I'm not 100% sure if you could see this from the video, but what we're going to see is that the metal grindings just went everywhere. What I want you to think about is the work was being done right here, okay? It's all over the floor, it's on the bench, it's on all this stuff. You can stay tight there. Those metal shavings that I can see made it this far away. How many feet is that? Five or six feet. Okay, these benches are what? Eight foot benches? Are they six foot? Something like that, right? Okay, so would you say that we're a good 10 to 12 feet away? Okay, Leah, keep that camera on. Okay, so this is definitely a point of, uh, of debris, right? You ready for this? Watch this. You have to make a circle of 12 foot, 10 to 12 foot of space. That means that debris has made it all the way over here. It's made it anywhere around here. Is it on the motorcycle? Yeah, it's on the fender. It's on the gas tank. It's on the fender. It's on the gas tank. Guys, what we're doing is I'm trying to prove a point to you so that you can have an understanding from the evidence of what happens. Boy, that's a big area. Who would have thought you'd have to cover stuff up this far away? Those are metal filings. On this customer's motorcycle, is this a black uh, Honda Shadow in pretty good shape? Yeah. Yeah. If you took a rag right now and wiped that, what would it do to the, to the tank? Scratch it. Oh my goodness, it would scratch it like crazy or whatnot. <clears throat> so what we gotta think about there's two things, okay? We need a plan in place to prevent it, makes sense? And we need to think about what we do when things go wrong, okay? So in this case, we wanna get an air gun out and we wanna dust everything off in this contaminated area, but we still need to protect the stuff that's exposed. We don't wanna get the debris back into the engines. If we focus back around over here on the bench, Here's the, here's the problem I you know I have with this of people taking things for granted is you see those tiny little dust particles all around this whole area. What about inside these carburetors? If the if the dust is anywhere else, could have it went in the fuel valves? Yeah. Yep. You know, on these cylinders. Yep. What about even in your battery charger? I mean, just all of this stuff needs to be thoroughly clean. That's going to be a ton of work um, for this area and for this student. So. It's, it just is what it is. It's going to have to be cleaned up. Let's think about how we can prevent it. This is one of my favorite ways. It's pretty simple. Okay. These garbage bags are pretty cheap insurance for us to be able to do this. How's that? Okay. Now, I want you to, let's just, let's get crazy here. Let's, let's really be thorough about this. Would it also be a really good idea to make sure there's no holes in the bag? Yeah. I understand that I took it out of there, but we got some sharp points here. So we want to be careful of this. Think about this for a second. As big as these bags are, I could have probably, you know, I'm going to move the student stuff here quick. I probably could have done another bag there, only about two or three bags. This bag that, or box has a headlight, and some clutch parts, it's not important. It's non-functional that we're not worried about. This stuff would have to be clean for a get back on a bike. I'd probably go ahead and be willing to stick that underneath there. But what about all this stuff? 
open motor parts or whatnot, it all needs to be covered up. The rags create, you know, gaps in between. If we don't overlay them to, to actually cover up all of it, I'm telling you, that, that ricocheted <clears throat> debris is going to get everywhere. All right, so we came up with this idea. This is something that was, you know, taught before, but it's forgot about when you don't go do it that often. So that's why here you're going to see us kind of coming back at you and saying, hey, did you prep your work area? You really need to think about that. And by the way, you guys have been a great group. You've done a great job of really walking around your benches, cleaning your benches, letting me, letting me lead you to say, hey, no loose parts on the bench, put it away, let's clean up our day that way. So I want to thank you for that. You've been a great model of that. The, uh, the next step that we have to do so that we make sure is we have to know where are these. Are you with me? When you guys go work at shops and you do stuff like this, do you often know why these uh, motors end up not being covered up and somebody just decides to go ahead and grind? They just don't know where the stuff is? God, they're in a hurry. Because you got a customer waiting on you, you got a service manager waiting on you, and they're like, what are you doing? Grind that little rusted nut off and get to work or grind that bracket or do something. And so we really take for granted preparation time, and that's what actually saves us all the lost time is just being prepared. Man, this every mechanic should know stuff. Uh, hope you're enjoying the series for YouTube uh, people out there watching that and you guys these bags are in the garbage cans The janitors here keep them underneath the current, uh, you know garbage that's in there uh, We have another roll of these in the bottom of the file cabinet. So that's where the stuff is Let's use it. And what do you guys think about this? Uh, why didn't the student just go to the, uh, the welding booth? like a designated area for this awesome how many people think it'd just be phenomenal to have a dedicated area you know what we call that we call that the dirty room okay so the grinding welding cutting and those operations are done in that room but you know what was happening last night is you had a student that was looking out for his other students and he knew that he was he was doing fab work that was going to be doing it for a long time he was going to be making a bunch of noise and so what he chose to do is just come to a different work area so those guys could do their tedious work he was actually looking out for them to move into this area. Let's think about the real world. How many shops that you guys know of or aware of have an actual dedicated dirty room? They don't. they don't, next to none of them. We have to be able to weld, grind, fabricate, cut within normal operations, right? So we have to be realistic. We don't wanna create such an opportunity here that we can't go duplicate at a dealership. Is that fair? So when you go to the dealership and there's no dirty room, this is a really good idea to protect your work area. Lexi, you, you said the point of uh, just go ahead and box everything up and move it out of the area. If this is the only vice, that is another option. Take this stuff, <clears throat> we've got an idea how far the debris will go, and then just get it out of that area. Does that make sense? One way or another, we're going to protect it, we're going to do a good job, and we're not going to have any problems.